As we're all spending most of our time at home, the Museum of Norwich at the Bridewell has come up with a creative way to challenge your family or friends you live with in a homegrown escape room game. Keep watching to find out how you can escape boredom with just pencils, paper, sticky tape, a few things you'll probably have around the house, and some imagination. Hey guys, what's up? Like that? Needs practice, but you're getting there. Good day, good viewers. I hope you've been following my tips on creating puzzles for the Lockdown Living Room Escape Challenge. Now we're going to look at putting the whole thing together to make sure it works, and what you need to do to make your game run smoothly and ensure that the players have fun. You could just put all your puzzles in a room, let everyone in, and tell them to get on with it. Uh, but they'd probably be A. Confused and B. Bored. A good escape game needs a story and an objective that the players are aiming for. For example, in Going Up the City... It's not Going Up the City, it's Going Up City. In one of the games at the Museum of Norwich at the Bridewell, you have to solve puzzles based on the things in the galleries to put together a perfect Saturday up the city and get a taxi home before time runs out. If you've been watching these films, you'll know that in my game, poor Mr Squiggles has been kidnapped. But by whom? It's almost certainly my old rivals in the Norfolk Archaeological Survey Team Youth section who are always trying to get one up on me. So, the first thing your team should find is a note telling them what's happened and giving them a clue to the first puzzle, which in this case is to find the codex. Here's my note. Help! I'm being followed by the nasties, and I think they have evil plans for me. I overheard one of them mention a code hidden in a book, something about the Aurora Borealis. Find the book and rescue me, please. Signed, Mr Squiggles. Oh dear, that's very upsetting, but also quite exciting. At the end of the note, you can add a four-digit combination for the players to solve with the codex so they can get going as soon as they find the book. Aurora Borealis. Now, what does that make me think of? Ah! Northern Lights, the codex. But how to put all the other puzzles together? This is where things can get really complicated. This is the flowchart used to design the other game at the Museum of Norwich, the Merchant's Vaults, which takes place in the medieval undercroft beneath the museum. You start here, uh, no, here, you work all the way down here, and you finally end up back here. I'll be honest, just looking at this makes my brain hurt. Uh, so we'll keep it simple and just make sure the team have all the things they need to solve one puzzle at a time. A good way to make this more fun is to put the clue to a puzzle in one item and the thing you need to solve it in the next one along. We're going to follow that pattern throughout the game. I've got all my puzzles laid out, ready to hide in their boxes, and I'm going to work through hiding one piece from one puzzle along with one piece from the next. Now, your players have found the codex, but they'll need a crib about how to use it. There's one in the PDF you can print or copy out, and we're going to hide that in the book along with the clue to the next puzzle, which I'm going to make the tangram. So, when the players have solved the combination from Mr Squiggle's note, 4856, page 48, paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, word 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, episode! That lets them open the first box and find the tangram pieces which they can then solve with the cat from the book. Now, with that, we also want a clue to the next puzzle, which I think I'll make the Roman numerals one, as that's quite different to the tangram. Here's the note from Mr Squiggles as the clue. I hope you found, find this. I overheard the kidnappers plotting, something about hiding a number of Roman clues nearby. Signed, Mr S. Now, when the team solve the cat tangram, they get the next combination, which they decode with the codex 4767. Page 47, paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, word 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Answering. I've labelled that box. In there goes the Roman numerals puzzle and the dice, which is part of the next one. Solving the numerals gets them into the next box. Combination 5549. Here! Here! Okay. Into this box 
I've got a big one because the ruler is going in here for the next puzzle along with the dice roll grid. When they've solved the dice roll. 2564. Excited! Excited! That unlocks the next box, which is going to have the rubber band and the Rebus clue with its solution. Stretching the band against the ruler and getting its combination. 8726. Snappish! That opens the box with the bean tin puzzle and a circular clue that points them to the DVD. In the DVD case, they find half of the riddle. The combination from the bean tin opens the next box. 8625. Impatient! In that box, they find the other half of the riddle and the pen or tube which they need for the Sitterly cipher, which they find in the box that the two-part riddle opens. GNU! And when they solve the Sitterly, they get to open the final box containing... Mr. Squiggles! It's so good to see you again, old friend. What? Oh, sorry. No, I don't think we've got any baked beans left. Oh, hang on! Yes! There are some in the Rebus clue! Whew. Saved! So, that's one way that you could put everything together. You can put the puzzles in any order you like, and even add some more if you've got some bright ideas. Before I go and get Mr Squiggles something to eat, he doesn't actually eat very much, so I'll probably just have to eat most of the beans for him, just a word about your role as Games Master. At the start, set the scene. Act a bit. Tell them how distraught you are about the kidnapping of your friend, or whatever scenario you've dreamed up for your game. You can even dress up like my friends at History Mystery do in the Museum of Norwich games. Also, explain how the boxes work. These are not ordinary boxes, oh no. They have magic voice-activated locks that can only be opened by reading the word that was used to lock them from the solution of a puzzle. Nothing else will work. Really. I mean, don't even think of trying. If you want to time your game, you could use the stopwatch on a smartphone. Most commercial escape games have a time limit, usually an hour, but in lockdown at home you won't have another team coming along after this one that you've got to get everything reset and ready for. So you can time things for fun if you like, but there's no need to bring everything to a crashing halt if the players are still going after an hour. Which brings me, finally, to clues. Your players are bound to get stuck at some point and might need a bit of a nudge. Let them stew for a minute or two, but if they're not making progress after that, it's probably time to lend a hand or they'll just get frustrated. A good strategy for escape game clues is to think of three levels. One, draw their attention to something. Have they found a clue and then forgotten about it? The Tangram Cat, for example. I'm sure I saw something that looked like those shaped pieces a while ago. If they're still not getting it, point them in the direction they need to go. Perhaps those pieces could be used to make that shape. Only if they're really stuck, step in and give them part of the solution, or if it really needs it, the whole thing. And there you have it, the complete guide to creating your own escape game at home, the Lockdown Living Room Escape Challenge. Please take a photo or even a little film and share it on social media. We'd love to see how you get on. Uh, please note that the proprietors are not responsible for any family arguments that may result. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. How about some... Hector! Good luck with making the puzzles. Don't forget to download the information pack and most important of all, please share on social media.
I reckon that went really well, don't you? It was most splendid. You got the voice really well. Ta. Oh. Do you think anyone would have guessed? I doubt it. Shouldn't imagine anybody's got a clue. Hang on, is that camera still running? Uh-oh. 